In many ways, the point of programming is to use a computer to solve problems. Pretty much every code a developer writes involves problem solving in one form or another. Do they need to automate a process, fetch data from somewhere, transform data, do complex calculations? All of these involve solving a problem, and it is this problem solving process which appears to make programming enjoyable for developers. With this in mind, what would be the fastest way for someone who has no programming experience to find out whether they would enjoy it or not? Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is James. I'm a software developer based in the UK. And on this channel, we explore the strategies and tools that help junior developers evolve their careers. In this video, I'm going to show you the process of solving a simple programming problem. And the goal is for you to see this process and to even follow along to experience coding for yourself. And hopefully you will have discovered whether programming is something you won't enjoy or that you do enjoy programming and could even consider this be a potential career path for you. Before I begin, I would like to explain why I believe following the exercise I'm about to demonstrate could help you discover whether you enjoy programming or not. On Google, I've searched for why developers enjoy programming. And having seen a few websites, articles or posts, some of the responses are puzzles and problem solving. Some people just love to solve puzzles and how it's almost like an addiction. Creating something amazing from scratch. The sheer joy of making things. Programming is fundamentally about creating solutions to problems. Converting ideas or imaginations into reality. The pleasure of making things that are useful to other people. Creation. People enjoy the ability to create things. Improving problem solving skills. Or liking coding because they like puzzles and makes their lives easier. Altogether, these reasons to me can be boiled down to two primary reasons why programming is enjoyable. Learning and problem solving. And so with this, I've prepared a short programming exercise in order to experience both of these, whereby if you follow and complete this exercise, you should have an idea whether you will enjoy programming or not. So I've intentionally designed the exercise to have the least barrier to entry. Ideally, you would be following this exercise on your computer. The point is for you to actually follow and do the exercise to determine whether you enjoy programming or not. So there should be no downloading or installing programming languages to your computer. You also wouldn't need any experience with programming as I'll run you through the very basics and exactly what you need to know in order to complete the short exercise. And so to meet this requirement, the programming language I have chosen for this exercise is JavaScript. The main reason is that it's a good beginner-friendly language and because most web browsers support it, you wouldn't need to download anything in order to get started. Okay, so I'll begin by going through specifically the JavaScript basics needed to solve this exercise. Strings. In computer programming, a string is a data type and is basically a sequence of characters. They are created with a single quote or double quote, and in layman's terms, you can use them to construct words or other sequences of characters. Integers. Integers are whole numbers, and basic arithmetic works as you would expect. Variables. Computer programs use variables to store information. Any data type can be stored in a variable. For example, a person's name, their age, date of birth. You can assign a variable using either the var, let, or const keyword with a name, followed by a single equals character, then your value. It is preferred to use either the const or let keyword const for when you don't need to reassign this variable and let's for when you do. Avoid using var. Boolean. In computer science, Boolean is a data type that has one of two possible values, usually denoted true or false. Comparison operators. These are used in logical statements to determine equality, inequality, or difference between values. When using comparison operators, its return type is Boolean. For example, 1 equals equals 1 is true, and 2 equals equals 1 is false. To compare whether something is not equal to something, use the exclamation mark followed by the equals character. And other comparison operators are less than, more than, less than or equal to, or more than or equal to. Concatenation. Strings and or numbers can be concatenated by using the plus operator. Think of it as combining two values together. Conditional statements. So conditional statements or if else statements are used to perform actions based on certain conditions. To use these statements, use the if keyword followed by your condition in parentheses, which needs to be a Boolean value. In this example, if the count equals three, then the block directly underneath will be evaluated. 
Else, if the count is equal to 4, then the block underneath that will be executed. And if neither of those are true, then the following else statement will be executed. You can also use the if statement without any preceding else statements. If the condition isn't met, then the logic within its block will not be executed. Loops. So loops are used to execute a block of statement a specified number of times, or till a specified condition is true. The one we're using for this exercise is the while loop. So the while loop is used to execute a block of statements till a specified condition is true. If the condition becomes false, the while loop terminates. We do need to make sure we have a way to break out of the loop, otherwise we could end up with an infinite loop and crash the program. But I'll demonstrate how the while loop works in the exercise. Console.log. The console.log is a function in JavaScript which is used to print any kind of variables or values to the console when passed in as a parameter. Don't worry about what functions are in general. Right now, we're just using this console.log function to print onto the console. Okay, so those are essentially the basics we'll need to solve the exercise. Print the lyrics for the 99 bottles of beer song onto the console. So the lyrics are very repetitive, where it counts from 99 bottles of beer down to zero bottles of beer. So let's move on to the exercise. So on my browser, I'm currently on a website, jseditor.io, which is an online JavaScript editor. This editor will allow me to write JavaScript. So if I demonstrate by logging to the console and using the console log command. And I hit the run button. You can see that in the console here, it will print out whatever I pass in as a parameter. This will be where we attempt to solve the exercise. So let's begin by looking at the lyrics we need to print to the console. As you can see, these lyrics are very repetitive with some slight variation. So if we go back to the editor, we need to print to the console those lyrics. One option is to duplicate the console log function, but with slight variation each time. And that would technically be a valid solution. So if I were to copy that out, so on and so forth, um, it would technically be valid. But given the repetitiveness of the lyrics, we can take advantage of loops in order to sequentially print to the console. So I'll start with creating a variable called count. And let's assign it to 10 for now. The loop we're going to use is the while loop with the condition that if the count is more or equals to zero, then execute code from within this block. And inside this block, I'll need to reassign the count variable so that with each sequence, it will decrease by one. And the condition will eventually be less than zero, which, which then terminates the loop and progresses onto the next line of code. So to demonstrate the loop works, I'll log to the console within this loop. And what I can do is actually set the count and write the first part of the lyrics. If I run this code, already you can see it's printing out the log that I, um, I have written to log to the console. So let's go through this um, one step at a time. So the count is set to 10, and I'm saying while the count is more than zero, more than or equals to zero, log to the console. And watch this. what this does is that when this first um, executes, it will run this code, it logs to the console, it reassigns the count variable um, to decrease it by one. By the time it reaches this line, this count would now equal to nine, and then it will go back to reevaluate the condition. So if the count is more than zero, in this case, the count is nine, it will execute this again. So this is why you get each line printed onto the console is one less because of kind of this logic here. So already, if I were to change this to 99 and I run the statement, then the first kind of portion of the exercise is essentially done. So what I'll do now is I'll complete the lyrics here. So I'll, I'll Rewrite this, 
So if I were to use concatenation again by assigning count to or concatenating count to this line here, then that will that will handle the kind of decreasing number with each sequence. Um, there is one thing that we need to be aware of that that particular line is one less. So to address this, what we can do is we can create a new line here and we can create a new variable and let's, I'll name it previous and it will just be count minus one. So that variable will now have the previous um, number ready for the next line. So I'll concatenate that into the lyrics as well in order to achieve that. So if I hit run again, Okay. The kind of bulk of the lyrics has been done already. So we have 99 bottles of beer on the wall, 99 bottles of beer, take one down and pass it around 98 bottles of beer on the wall. And this is continued sequentially up until we reach, up until the count is set to zero. So the next step is to look at the lyrics again. So if I go back to the web page to show the lyrics and scroll down to the very bottom. And there are some slight variations we need to be aware of. So once we reach two bottles of beer on the wall, take one down and pass it around one bottle of beer. So this is no longer sync. This is no longer plural. And this line, this word here was uh, singular. So we need to account for that. So one thing we can do is if we go back to our code is to first assign the word bottles into a variable. So if I go back up here, I'll create a new variable called word and I will write, we've assigned the variable bottles here and what we can now do is to concatenate that variable inside the log as well. So if I bottle another word, reduce that. We can do the same here. So what we'll also need to remember to do is have a empty empty string here with a space in order to space out the word. So if I were to run this, so if we run that, so running it, we get the same result. Um, so we know that it's currently working. If I scroll down to the bottom, um, we haven't added the logic yet. So we at least know that this change that we added um, currently hasn't broken anything. And what we can now do is we can say if the, well, let's say if the word Rather, if the count is, um, say, more than one, we'll reassign the word to bottle. And let's see what happens here. Rather, if the count is, sorry, I got that wrong. If the count is less than two, we assigned that. So 99 bottles is working. And if I get all the way down to two, then this line here is starting to appear a bit more kind of accurate. Um, so this was one way to do it, but there are like other things to bear in mind. So we go back to the lyrics, actually. The the variation on the final lines are uh, are more different. So no more bottles of beer on all. So we're no longer, we're not even using um, a count anymore. And also, well, these two lines are a lot more different. So we can go back and instead of using logic here like this, what we can do is we will change this to be more than, well, so if the count is more than or equals to two, then we'll print out this. 
And once we get to this level, we can print the remain remaining lines in order to complete the test. So if I run that again, so 99 bottles of beer, all the way down to one bottle of beer, with no more bottles of beer, right? There is one thing that we need to address, which is this line here. So this line still needs to be singular. So in order to achieve that, we will need our if statement we had before, although we should revert the line to so these words will will only include 99 bottles down to two bottles. So these words actually will not change um, at all. So we can restore that back to what it was. It's this word that will need to be a variable so that it can be dynamic and change um, based on what logic uh, we provide. So if I go back into here and I can say if the count is equal to two, for example, then we'll reassign the word to bottle. And the idea is that only this point will need to be changed. So as soon as, as, soon as the count reaches two, then that variable will be reassigned. So if I run that again, there you go. So we've managed to solve the exercise. This is an example of programmatically solving a problem. By writing a few lines of code, we were able to print the entire lyrics of that song. I chose this exercise because it uses multiple programming concepts, such as conditional statements, loops, concatenation, comparison operators, and then having to figure out when and where to apply them to achieve our goal. The process demonstrated in this video isn't really an indication of how you might solve a particular programming problem, however. For example, at the start of this video, I had gone through exactly what programming concepts were needed to solve the exercise, but there will be times where you may not know of a technique or feature in your programming toolbox, and so it's very common that you'll learn or discover something new during the problem solving process. It often involves using Google. So we've learned some programming basics and then solved this problem. If you followed along and enjoyed it, I would recommend to next choose a programming language and learn the basics first. I have a video on how to choose your first programming language, which I'll leave in the description of this video. Once you've done that, the next step is to either create something with that programming language, so choosing and building a project, or find other programming problems to solve. By doing this and getting hands on, your experience and knowledge grows, and you're more likely to retain that knowledge as well. So that's it from me, a quick exercise to find out whether you enjoy programming. Thank you for watching. I'll be making more programming videos like this, so please subscribe. And if you found this video helpful, please leave a like, comment, and share. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.